Mr. Marlowe joins us now from Washington, D.C. So I read your book, um, and it's a good book. You back up a lot of what you say with facts. But I want to I want to get specific about a few things. So everyone in the world knows the press didn't like Donald Trump and the president gave the press ammunition not to like him. Would you say that's a fair statement? Oh, yeah. And I agree with that. First of all, Bill, thanks so much for having me. I've been a fan of yours for years. And congrats on your latest number one. Uh, we're Thank all you. fans of the killing books in the Marlowe household. Thank um, you. But yeah, of course. And uh, I host a national radio show in Sirius XM. And much to my audience's chagrin, I criticize President Trump whenever I think he deserves it. But uh, I think overall, he probably would have been outperforming Biden. And uh, your border reporting, I think, backs that up pretty good. OK, so you do a lot of analysis of the election in your book and the areas that the Trump organization, the Trump attorneys said were fraudulent. And it's very interesting to read that, I have to say. I, I, I read it very, very slowly, Alex. I absorbed it. But here, as a hard-bitten, old-school journalist, here's my question. The things you raise, the questions you raise, are valid. But the evidence of massive fraud never appeared. And I go back to Bill Barr, the attorney general. And he said quite Bluntly, there was fraud, but it didn't rise to the level where the whole election would be thrown out. Do you believe that statement? Um, from the evidence that has been presented, I think that's a fair statement. And I think that uh, the book is critical of some people in the conservative movement who I think pursued a message that was never going to overthrow the election. And in fact, I don't think it served Donald Trump very well in terms of raising the questions that about legitimacy of the election. And some of these spy thriller-esque uh, Chinese uh, purchasing of Venezuelan voting machines to flip votes was, was pretty absurd. And there was never any evidence of that, as it turned out. And I thought that was a pretty big distraction when there really were these changes in the election that took place. We don't know for sure if they were legal or not. Maybe they were. All the court cases never got handled in time. Uh, I think there were some reasonable questions to be raised about whether or not these last minute changes ostensibly to keep people safe from the coronavirus uh, were a big factor in some of these swing states. I agree with you. Pennsylvania is the most egregious because what happened there was that judges in Pennsylvania changed the law unilaterally to allow mail-in votes that A, didn't have proper identification and B, were supposed to be counted up to the end of election day, but they extended it for no reason at all. They had no legal basis to do that, the judges. They just made it up. That was what the Trump administration and lawyers should have zeroed in on and gotten to the Supreme Court. Now, as you know, because you watched our broadcast yesterday, I am saying that Disney ABC, Comcast NBC, Viacom CBS, AT&T CNN are now in business to promote the progressive ideology. Your book says that as well. It doesn't say it the way I said it, but it basically, it basically says the same thing. The key question is, why are these monolithic corporations in business to promote promote progressive thought? Uh, I think at this moment, that is the thing that is best for business. I, I think this is a big question with a lot of answers. I think part of it actually goes back to academia. I think it goes back to the state of American culture right now where millennials, people my age and younger who are now entering the working world and even raising the middle and senior management levels, uh, they've been raised on a steady diet of America is not a very great place. Uh, we, they've gone through our universities, which have insisted on that. Globalism is the way of the future. Borders are pretty much racist. And so those people are rising the ranks of, of companies and they see every move the company makes 
as something that reflects on their personal political values. So that's going to push these companies left. And these are the loudest, most angry people on social media, which are very persuasive to some of these businesses because it's a major hassle to try to keep that all at bay. It's much easier. Uh, the path of least resistance is to buckle from time to time to the woke 35 and under crowd. Then that is where the business lies. Not to mention, if you look around the world, the emerging markets of China, for example, one of the biggest global markets on the planet, uh, crossing China is uh, going to be very bad for your bottom line. I think it's also very bad for humanity if you work with China. And that's something that these companies haven't had to grapple with because there's no press putting pressure on them. OK, but when Disney orders its park employees to sit for critical race theory seminars, which essentially say white people are the cause of all of societal ills, when they order those people to do it, those are defenseless workers. They need the money and they have to sit through this propaganda. Then I think critical mass has been reached. Why would Disney do that? Why would Disney, that, that is an amazing question. And I don't know if that's one that the book fully answers, but they've certainly made the calculation that this is good business. It is good business to push their business into the political left sphere. And I think part of this is because the right is not as good at activism as the left. I think our values are much stronger, but in terms of activism, we're not nearly as engaged in terms of getting to the public square. And so in a way, the book is somewhat critical of the right because we have allowed for some of these things to occur by being too passive. And of course, I disavow political violence, Bill, and I wanna be crystal clear for the Soros-funded freaks who I know monitor your show and my show, uh, but the, this is something where we need to be much more engaged or this is going to swallow us whole, this uh, Marxism that's coming through. Uh, one of the things I have to say is that Simon & Schuster published your book. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Simon & Schuster, the biggest publisher in the country, and they did publish your book. They didn't give you any heat on it, right? Uh, no, no, they were they were terrific to work with. I tried to be a consummate professional the whole way through, but yes, I was pleased with the way I was treated. All right, good. So the book is Breaking the News, Exposing the Establishment Media's Hidden Deals and Secret Corruption. The author is Alex Marlowe. Uh, continued success, Alex. Thanks for helping us out tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Fellow Americans, I am concerned about the U.S. dollar. Huge debt, as you know. Will it stay? as the world's reserve currency? That's why now more than ever, I recommend you diversify with gold and silver. And the only company I recommend and have for years is American Hartford Gold. I trust them. I've personally done business with them. They sell physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. And they make it very easy. So call them right now. Make sure you tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they will give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. Since I have been recommending American Hartford Gold, gold shot up more than 40%. Silver, more than 60%. So don't wait, call them now. 866-501-5201. 866-501-5201. Or text BILL to 65532. Again, that's 866-501-5201. Or text BILL to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.